Even before the bipartisan infrastructure bill was put forth in the initial negotiations, we knew that it was going to have a lot of garbage in it. And since then, we've broken down multiple different aspects of the agreement that are pretty terrible. But there's one that we apparently have been missing. And so we're very lucky to be joined on the program by a journalist who's gonna break down some of the other issues baked into this bill. Is the executive editor of the American Prospect, David Day, and welcome back to the Damage Report. Thanks for having me on, John. Uh, always glad to have you on. I really appreciate your work. Um, and uh, in this most recent piece, or one of your most recent pieces, you've uh, delved into one of potentially the biggest issues with that bipartisan infrastructure bill. Um, and it's about an aspect of the bill uh, under public private partnerships, private activity bonds, and asset recycling, the sort of terminology that seems uh, tailor made to make it so that regular working Americans have no idea what's going on. But what is this all about and why should we be worried about it? Well, it's about the selling off of America. Uh, we're, we're talking about privatization. And what that means is that instead of the government uh, building and operating uh, a road or a bridge or a water system or any kind of public infrastructure, common infrastructure that we all use every day and that we all paid to build, uh, that a private company then uh, owns and manages that service or gets a concession to manage it for 75 years or however long. And the, the, the animating theory is sort of a Reagan-esque theory that uh, private enterprise is always more efficient than government and it's always going to run these things better. Uh, but the only way really that a private company can manage infrastructure uh, in, in a way that is profitable to them uh, is to cut labor costs, cut maintenance costs, cut whatever costs they can in order to build in a layer of profit that government does not require. And in, in, so in getting that profit, we lose out in a couple of different ways. Number one, it's, it, it, it's usually worse run infrastructure. Number two, in order to make back the profits that they desire, it's usually it usually creates what I would call a private tax upon the people who use that infrastructure, tolls, extra fees, price gouging on water rates, things like that. And three, it creates the loss of democratic control. One of the more prominent examples of this is in Chicago, where the parking meters in the in the city were leased out to a private company. That that it's a consortium that then manages the parking meters. Not only have parking meter rates gone up 800 percent since the beginning of this contract, but when there's a festival. A street fair, something like that in Chicago, the private business as part of its contract demands that it must be paid out for the money it loses by shutting off the streets to its to cars and thereby parking meters. So this loss of democratic control maybe is the most important part, I think, of, 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 of as a byproduct of privatization. So, uh, you know, I. I guess I can see maybe devil's advocate why this would be in the bill. Obviously, for a long time, people have really loved toll roads. So why not do the same thing to all of our infrastructure? I mean, that's it's just great. So I think I understand why this is happening. But but from your point of view, the Democrats have taken over. This seems reminiscent of some of the ways that Trump initially wanted to, when they would occasionally talk about getting some sort of infrastructure bill done and then forget about it. This is some of the stuff they talk about. But he's not president anymore. Democrats have taken control. So why is this such a big part of the thing that they've that they've put forward so far? Well, two things. It's not just reminiscent of what Trump put out. It's exactly what Trump put out. He 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 wanted his administration wanted to use privatization as a way to fund infrastructure. Um, and the reason this is in the bipartisan infrastructure framework, which is what they're calling it now, or BIF for short, uh, the, the, the reason that this is in there is because they couldn't agree on increasing any taxes. Republicans said that we're not going to uh, increase taxes in order to pay for this infrastructure in any way. And there was this desire to pay for infrastructure, even though there, there's no compelling reason to actually do that. Um, 
So what are you left with? Well, if you do this thing called asset recycling, which is literally you pay, you sell off older built infrastructure to pay for new to be built infrastructure, right? So that provides money that that allows you to create these these new programs. Usually, when you sell a concession. Uh, uh, you know, you sell the parking meters in in Chicago, or you sell the water system in Miami Dade County. You get upfront money. That city gets money that it can use to build other infrastructure, plug budgets, or, or fund you know whatever it wants to fund. And so this is a pay for in the bill. It's on the revenue side of the bill to privatize, essentially sell off this infrastructure, and that's why it's there because we've set up this sort of false. Uh, impression that every everything in the infrastructure bill has to have something equivalent on the revenue side. Yeah, you know, just just because you're bringing up this topic of the 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 arguments about how exactly to pay for this, and we already know that the Republicans are going to be against any new taxes. They're against raising the taxes back to where they were just about four years ago. But I don't know if you've seen the the pressure campaign that's going on right now from all these different groups to make sure that the IRS doesn't even get funded to bring in the additional revenue. Um, so yeah, we, we get a, a pretty clear idea of what the point of this bipartisan bill is. But um, I'm curious, so you, your initial piece about this was written a, a little bit ago. We've had some time now. Have you seen any pushback from this component about the privatization in the, the bipartisan bill from any Democrats? Is there any reason to believe that that's going to be eventually stripped out? Or should we resign ourselves to that being a part of what they're probably going to do? I mean, the criticism has been pretty muted. I've seen the White House try to argue that they're going to have guardrails around it, and 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 that it, this won't be as as catastrophic. That maybe no federal assets would be sold because some of the things that were being eyed were things like the Tennessee Valley Authority, which provides power to millions of people across the southeast, or Dulles Airport, which is a, a piece of infrastructure that the federal government. <laughs> Uh, owns and operates, which could be sold off. Um, so they've said no federal assets will be will be sold as part of this. But that that leaves open a wide array of local assets uh, that the government could incentivize, like give extra uh, an additional amount of funds to a city, uh, and then use that money to to fund the new infrastructure. So there there are ways around this. Uh, I I think the, the criticism has been far too muted. I think this is clearly the most dangerous part of the bipartisan bill. If you believe that there's going to be a second bill, a reconciliation bill that picks up a, a lot of the stuff that was that fell off in this bipartisan bill, and eventually will get to a place that looks something like. Biden's American Jobs Plan and American Rescue Plan, maybe you don't have a problem with this. But the privatization changes the equation, in my yeah. view. It 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 adds an element that was not in the initial agenda that is very hazardous for all the reasons that I've discussed previously. It's it's really substituting public taxes for private taxes. Right? I mean, you're 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 saying, well, we don't want to raise taxes on the American people, but we're going to create toll roads for the American people <laughs> that is still collecting taxes. It just is a private company that's doing the collection. It's no different. It violates Biden's principle that nobody under four hundred thousand dollars gets a tax increase. Uh, you know, he he nicks the increase to the gas tax for that reason, and yet this privatization, which would create more fees to be paid by people making less than $400,000 a year remains in the bill. I don't understand the logic of how you can get rid of one and allow the other. I think there needs to be a lot more pushback. Yeah, um, well, I, I can understand why you wouldn't understand the logic. You are not a multi, 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 multi millionaire who owns the company that's gonna make bank off of this. Um, but but I'm I'm so thankful for for you for doing this work because as I alluded to in the intro, we've been uh, very focused on what's not in the bipartisan bill, partially because we have so little faith uh, on the show about what will end up being done via reconciliation, if anything is. But you're totally right. Even if all of our wildest fantasies about the reconciliation bill come true, we still now have this massive, dangerous, damaging poison pill um, already uh, baked into it. So. 
Um, if you'd like more information, you're watching this, if you'd like more information on this. Uh, David's done uh, amazing work at the American Prospect. Uh, the write-up about this is available there. And David, uh, thank you once again. Thank you. Check out the Damage Report podcast each day, wherever you get your podcasts, whether Pocket Casts or Stitcher or iTunes. You can join me as I give you the news and stories you want with a range of co-hosts and interview guests jumping in on the fun each day. Again, that's the Damage Report, wherever you get your podcasts. And if you get them at iTunes, don't forget to rate and review. Sometimes I'll read them live on the show.